As I scrutinized the gospel accounts even further, I realized that it was important to find out not just whether or not the information was rooted in direct and indirect eyewitness testimony, but I needed to know, was this information reliably preserved during the time period before it was finally written down? We have to put ourselves into the ancient world without modern media, without even a print-based culture in which the only and the standard way of preserving information was through oral tradition, most of which was memorized. Young rabbis were often forbidden to comment on a passage of scripture until they had memorized it perfectly. In fact, it was not uncommon for rabbis of Jesus' time to commit the entire Torah to memory. I've sometimes heard people say, look, I've been in a situation where I whisper something to someone, they whisper it to someone else, and it goes through 10 or 11 people, and by the time the last person tells what was said, it's totally different from what I told the first person. And we can't trust the Gospels for the same reason because it was transmitted over a long period of time. That illustration is really a bad analogy. And you have to understand that the first century apostles who passed on information about Jesus were deeply concerned to get this information correct because they saw it as sacred holy tradition. It wasn't about what Joe was eating for dinner last Wednesday night. In our day of instant media and everything has to be on film or tape recorded, we are more skeptical of oral tradition, but we don't really understand the nature of oral tradition. Oral tradition is a community event. A story is passed down by individuals within that community. Well, if they get it wrong, you've got an entire community that's going to correct them. So it is self-correcting all the way. These stories um, were passed on reliably because they were passed on by the community of disciples. In fact, we now have scholarly studies that have been done of oral cultures, and we know that through several generations, oral tradition can be preserved and passed on without changing a thing. Even though I became convinced that ancient cultures could pass along oral tradition reliably over time, I still had an obvious objection to the New Testament, and that was, isn't it really filled with contradictions? One of the issues people often raise is the question of apparent contradictions between the Synoptic Gospels, where there's a parallel story. For example, um, Matthew tells the story of two blind men being healed, whereas in Mark's account, there's only one blind man. How can we get this contradiction? The vast majority of these apparent contradictions, however, are quite easily resolved. Uh, Mark describes only one of the two uh, blind men, the one who is most prominent, obviously, or perhaps even the one who became a disciple of Jesus and became prominent in the later church. So most of these apparent contradictions are, are quite easily resolved. Had every single account given us exactly the same detail, we might have accused them of some form of collusion of having gotten together and carefully planned out how they were always going to tell the story with the exact number of details, but then one doesn't have independent testimony at all. It's natural when you have multiple eyewitnesses to the same event, you're gonna get different perspectives. And that's okay, you want that. What you're looking for is a core to the testimony that's the same, that's consistent, even though there may be some variation in the incidental details. If you're in a court of law and you have multiple witnesses come in and testify to the exact same thing, the first objection that's brought up is to say collusion. They got together, they orchestrated their testimony and their credibility is shot. The earliest known copies of the Gospels were written on sheets of papyrus and scrolls made of animal skins. They are among the oldest existing manuscripts of antiquity. The Codex Sinaiticus was authored between AD 330 and 350. It contains almost all of the New Testament and a significant portion of the Old. While the Codex Vaticanus from the same era is a nearly complete Greek copy of the entire Bible. A papyrus fragment from the 18th chapter of John dates to A.D. 125, less than a single generation after the Gospel was originally written. We have better manuscript attestation for the New Testament than any other ancient document. For example, the, the Bible of the Greeks, Homer's Iliad, is preserved in maybe 600 manuscripts, the oldest of them a thousand years after the document was actually written. The New Testament, we have something like 5,000 Greek manuscripts. 
So everyone agrees, whether liberal or conservative, that we have an incredibly reliable New Testament. We have thousands of manuscripts of the New Testament. We also have virtually the entire New Testament preserved in the quotations of the Church Fathers in the first four centuries, so that if we had no copies of the New Testament, we could reconstruct the New Testament from quotations from the early Church Fathers. Jesus, of course, wasn't the emperor of the Roman Empire. He wasn't some autocrat that had conquered half of the world, but he did leave an impact in his own environment and created a movement that grew from there. And there is a remarkable amount of documents and corroboration. Josephus refers to him. The Roman historian Tacitus uh, refers to him. Suetonius, the political writer, refers to him. Uh, critics refer to him. And so uh, it's like a stone thrown into a pond. The ripples go out and out and everywhere are felt. It's a very impressive record taken as a whole. In AD 93, the Jewish historian Josephus published his work, Antiquities of the Jews. Scholars generally agree that the following text accurately records Josephus' record of Jesus. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. When Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men amongst us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him first did not forsake him. And the tribe of Christians, so named for him, are not extinct to this day. <laughs> 